it's kind of a standalone section. It, it, it's going to kind of uh, bridge us into uh, 2.2. And then from 2.2, when we start derivatives, power rule, that's really the foundation uh, uh, that we're going to build everything uh, for the rest of this uh, semester. Uh, but it's important that we start with 2.1, even though it feels a little bit tedious and it will feel uh, <clears throat> that it's kind of the long way of, of, of doing derivatives. It's not efficient, but conceptually it's important. It helps us see the connection between algebra and calculus and also allows us to see, you know, where does limit play a role in, um, in calculus? But really, once we cross that bridge uh, in, uh, into 2.2, into we're really going to leave this definition of a derivative behind. Um, uh, we have, we'll have a much more efficient way of working through derivatives. But uh, AP exams, sometimes they do uh, uh, ask questions in a way that uh, um, test student knowledge of definition of derivative, and uh, we'll come back and we'll review that when we need to. But, um, but just know that you know, it's going to feel a little tedious, uh, but it is kind of a standalone section. And uh, it is important uh, for us to to start here. Um, so tomorrow uh, we're still going to stick with 2.1 uh, practice um, uh, with the concept, and uh, you're, we're we're just going to work through that this uh, packet. I didn't print out the entire chapter two packet. Um, haven't had time to do that. So next week I'll give you guys uh, the rest of the unit two packet, as well as the rest of the homework um, pages. And the calendar. Okay. Now, Monday is Labor Day. Tuesday, uh, technically it's a virtual day, but I'm just going to uh, have us do additional practice um, in your uh, packet. I don't want to try to cover anything new and, and do anything virtual. So, in your packet, you're going to see pages uh, five and six, seven and eight. So, tomorrow we'll do page five and six. On uh, Tuesday, you're just going to try to complete seven and eight. I have the keys in the back, so you can kind of work along uh, the key if you like. There is homework tonight, but I'm just going to check this and the rest of your packet pages on Wednesday. And I'll send out a reminder on Tuesday um, so that, um, you know, after a long weekend, you'll you'll know what to expect uh, when you come back on Wednesday. So after we come back on uh, Wednesday, we're going to start 2.2 and we're Largely going to leave this 2.1 section behind. So it's kind of like this own, kind of like this intro uh, section before the main um, derivative uh, section starts 2.2. Okay, any questions about this, uh, uh, these two days and next Tuesday? So just on Tuesday, we're working through stuff in here. Right, right. So the last two pages in your packet, I'm just going to have you guys complete it. I'll, I'll send out a reminder Monday to let you know hey, Tuesday's a virtual day. You guys just, work through the two pages that we've been working through. And then also you can uh, complete the homework because I'm not going to check this homework tomorrow. I'm going to check it on Wednesday. Okay, so after today, nothing new. We're just going to practice tomorrow and I expect you guys to finish uh, the rest of the pages on uh, Tuesday. Okay, all right. So uh, go to our notes. All right. Okay, so um, today we're talking about derivative and tangent line problem. So today's goal is to find the formula to calculate the slope of all tangent lines to a curve. So I'm just going to draw a uh, curve. You guys don't want to do this, but I just want to. Okay, show a curve here. Now, um, I'm just going to pick some random points along this curve. And I'm going to talk about the steepness of each point of this curve. Okay. Um, and we like to call, we like to draw these tangent lines. Uh, it kind of helps us see uh, visually how steep these points are. So I'm just going to pick some random points and I'm just going to draw tangent lines to them. And then we're just going to talk about um, these points. OK, 
Okay, so this first point here, um, uh, if you had to guess, what's the slope at this point? Two or three. Right, some positive slope, right? Uh, steeper than one. Okay, but right now we don't have to worry about, you know, we're never going to have to, to uh, uh, give a correct estimate. We just, have, I just want us to be able to assign these as positive, zero, or negative. Okay, so this is a pretty steep slope in the positive direction. What's the steepness here? It's a y equals something. It's a, uh, okay. But zero. it's zero, right? So when when you don't feel when it feels like you're just walking on level ground, that's slope zero. Okay. What do you expect out of this slope? Negative. Negative slope. And here zero. Zero. And this is positive, positive something, right? Yeah. Five, six, whatever. Now, if I asked you to calculate the slope of this line, what information would you need? Two points. Just two points, right? And let's say the slope is three. Then any point on this line, the slope is going to be what? Three, three right? It's never going to change. What if I ask you, what is the slope of this curve? It changes, right? It depends, right? Your answer would be, well, it depends, right? Am I, you know, am I here? Am I here? Am I here? Well, that's what calculus is going to do for us. Calculus is going to allow us to say, what is the slope of that curve? And what we're going to get back is going to be some formula. And that formula, it's going to allow us to tell us the steepness of every point on this curve. Not, not just an approximation, but the exact steepness of that point on the curve. So um, this whole uh, calculus, um, uh, uh, the whole point of calculus is to study the rate of change. And rate of change is slope related. So this entire semester, we're just going to be talking about derivatives, talking about slope related to a curve. OK. so. That seems like kind of a daunting um, a thing to do, right? It's like, how am I, how are we going to come up with a slope formula that will tell me the steepness of every single point on this curve? And what we're going to do is we're going to start off with the slope formula, and then we're going to figure out how we can adapt the slope formula to get us something that will tell us the steepness of every point on an ever changing curve. Okay. So, the goal is to find the formula to calculate the slope of all tangent lines to a curve. <coughs> okay, so we know how to find the slope of a line. Slope, if I gave you point P and point Q and I named them X1, X, X1, Y1, and X2, Y2, what would you say the slope of this line is using the formula? Yep, change in Y, good. Y2 minus Y1 over change in X. X2 minus X1, okay. So this is going to be the foundation. OK, we're going to start with this. And we're going to make we're going to build our way up. Now, let's talk about this curve here. This is a, a curve. Let's call this function f of x. And I'm just going to pick a random point on this curve. And I'm going to draw a tangent line to that curve. And the question is, what is the slope of this line? Well, uh, if I want to find slope, I need what? I need two points, but right now, there's only one point that sits on this curve, and as of right now, I'm not able to create a slope formula with just one point. But let's start off with something that we could use. What if along this curve, so I'm going to highlight this curve here in green. Okay. What if along this curve, I picked another point that is some distance away from point P, and I call it a point Q? Now, if I draw a line between those two points, I, I can calculate the slope of this line. But is this slope the same as the slope that I'm trying to reach? No. It's not, right? But it's, a, it's some sort of approximation, right? They're both positive, um, but it's not completely accurate. So the question is, is there anything that I can do with point Q that will allow my slope to become more accurate? Boom, that's it. OK, move it closer, right? So the, the closer I move point Q, then the more accurate my slope will become, right? I see that as I bring my point Q closer towards point P, then my slope is going to become more and more accurate. So what if I continue to bring point Q closer and closer to point P? My approximation will get better and better and better and better. But I don't want just an approximation. I want the exact slope. So what if we could do this? What if we could start with two points and then just let the distance between point P and Q decrease until it reaches zero? 
And that process of merging point Q into point P is where limits come in. We're going to decrease the distance between the two points so that essentially we're down to just one point and we're able to quote unquote find the slope of this line relying on just one point. Okay. So we're going to start off with two points, but we're going to use limits to move the points closer. And not only closer, we want to we want the, the distance between the two points to decrease all the way to zero so that they will merge into one point. Okay. So that is what we're going to try to achieve today. Now back to this curve, okay, back to this curve and this line, but I'm going to um, uh, fill with fill this with more information. Okay, so it's still we're still along this curve. Okay, we're still starting with point P and Q, um, but before we can move them closer to each other, we want to start off with identifying some information about these points. And it's going to feel a little messy because we're holding on to all these variables because we want the ability to move them, right? So if I start calling this 2, 1, and 5, 2, they're kind of stuck, right? We can't move things that are already stuck. So we're, we're holding on to these, these uh, variables, and that's why it's going to feel a little messy. So let's say point P is some distance away from the origin, and that's, that's solid. let's say that, that it's some X value. Okay, maybe it's 2, maybe it's 3, maybe it's 5. And if I plug that x value into the function, let's say 5 into the function, I'll get f of 5. So I'm going to hold on to the x value. So I'm going to call point P x f of x. Right? It's just going to have that flexibility to be whichever point I want it to be, um, but I'm just going to call it x f of x. Okay? Now point Q is going to be some distance further away from my initial point. So if this is Two, then let's say I want to move three units away or four units away or five units away. And if it's like two plus five, then it's seven. But rather than putting seven or attaching a number to it, I'm just going to, just going to call that X plus H. So I know X plus H is going to be some distance away from my starting point. And if I insert that seven or nine or 10 into the function, it'll be like F of nine or F of 10. But instead of calling it F of nine or F of 10, I'm going to call it X plus H is the X value some distance away. And if I insert that value into the function, it'll be F of X plus H. Okay, so we're just holding on to all these variables just to allow for these two points to have the flexibility to, to change. Okay, so now let's say these are the two points. Okay, and I asked you, what is the slope between these two points? We'll do the same thing. What would that look like? Slope wise. Do the same thing that you guys did up here. What would that be? F of X. Okay, good. So F of X plus H minus good. All over. Okay, X sub two minus X. Okay. Now, I can't do anything with the numerator, right? Those are function notations, but is there anything that I could do with the denominator? The x is what? Cancels out. So I'm just left with h in the bottom. So this is what we're going to do. Uh, just like how we talked about uh, with this diagram above, we're going to continue to decrease the distance of h so that point Q will start inching towards point P until the distance goes all the way to zero. So that is essentially what we're working with right here. Maybe it's hard to see the slope formula hidden in here because things are canceled out, but we see why things are canceled out because X of two minus X of one allowed the X to go away. So. What I really want us to be able to understand is that when you see this notation, it is really just a reworking of the slope formula with the potential for movement. Right? We're, we're taking the finest slope between two points, but then we're allowing that second point to move closer and closer towards the first point because we're allowing that H to decrease, that distance to decrease between the two points. And if once H approaches zero, then 
we no longer are just going to have some approximation of the slope at a point. We're going to find the exact steepness of a point on the curve. Okay, okay. we're, we're going to uh, do a practice problem with this on the next page, but let me just go through some notations here. Um, F prime of X, if, when you see this notation here, that apostrophe, we call it prime. So F prime of X, this is the notation that we're going to be using to indicate a derivative function. And derivative is just the slope or steepness of a curve at a single point. So, I'm, so we're going to keep saying the word derivative, but I want to keep reminding us that it is just slope. Right? So, you know, when we hear the word derivative, it's easy to just feel like it's some abstract term. But I want us to keep reminding us that it's just steepness, right? It's just the slope of a curve at a single point. So derivative is a slope finding formula for a curve to a, uh, for a curved function where the slope is ever changing. Okay. Now there is also this alternative uh, alternative derivative definition, uh, which you can if you just look at it briefly, you can kind of see um, where that slope is coming from, right? Why right. so? 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. We'll talk about this um, definition a little bit later, but let's um, focus our attention on this general limit definition. So let's go to the back page, and I'm going to intro uh, example 1 for us. Let me uh, work this on a separate sheet, so I have plenty of room here. So example one says, find the general derivative for f of x equals x squared. So let me start off by indicating what function we're working with, f of x equals x squared. I think we know what that looks like. That's just a parabola. So our goal is we're going to be um, finding a slow formula that is specifically um, tailored for this graph. Okay. After everything is said and done, we're going to be able to come up with a formula that will tell us the steepness of every single point on this curve. Okay. So let's write down our limit definition of a derivative, and I'm going to walk us through it. Now, you're going to recognize this process because we did this in chapter P, but in chapter P, we didn't really know what we were doing. We're just we're just following this process. We didn't know what this meant, what this represented. But now we understand that this is really a reworking of the slope formula, and we're just going through this process to figure out what is the slope of this curve. And we know it's ever changing, so we know that our slope formula is going to give us back a variable to indicate that there's going to be some change occurring all the way across this curve. Now. We're going to make some substitutions. Okay. Uh, this is the harder one to substitute, and we'll talk about that in a second. This is the easier one. Okay. What can I replace f of x with? X squared. So we know that's easy. I'm just going to put an arrow to it to indicate, okay, that's an easy substitution that we're going to be able to make. But this f of x plus h, let's talk about this. Now, I want to create something that is. Um, Easily done so that you're never going to have any trouble create, uh, finding the f of x plus h. So what I want you to do is if you always take these uh, first two steps, you're never going to make a mistake. Okay. So start off by writing the function. Now I want you to write the function with a space where the x was. So I want you to remove the x and I want you to reserve that space where the x was. Does that make sense? That first and second step. If you can do that second step, you're not going to make a mistake because these reserved spots will be for your argument. Okay. So now I'm going to replace that space with what? X plus H. Now we know exactly what to put in place of F of X plus H. So this is equal to f x plus h. So I know that this is going to go in for this. Right? The whole point is we want to get the numerator out of function notation so we can actually do this limit problem.
Okay. F of x plus h gets replaced with x plus h quantity squared minus what? X minus x squared, right? That's the that's the easy substitution. All over h. Okay, so this is a limit problem that. So let's go back to, to think about unit one, right? If you see a limit as x approaches a real number, or sorry, in this case h approaching the real number, what's the first thing we do? Okay. Yeah, replace every h with zero and see what happens, right? So what happens when I plug in zero for h? X squared minus x squared, I get a zero over zero. I know there's a hole. I know there's a limit waiting for us at there's a some there's an answer waiting for us at the end. This is not limit doesn't exist. So we know we gotta find common factors, reduce, and reevaluate. So we're gonna work uh, to try to get this cleaned up. We're gonna foil that x plus h out. So if I foil that out. down what I'm going to do here. So x plus h times x plus h, if I fold that out, I get x squared plus xh plus xh plus h squared. Don't forget minus x squared, right? After we fold this out, we still have to remember to deal with that x squared all over h. All right, any cleanup opportunities here? Yep. X squared goes away. Can we combine like terms? Yeah, add the um, x h's together. Yep, which gives us what? 2 x h, okay. Is there a common factor? Which is h. h. This is going to be the same thing every time. You're always looking for an h in the numerator because it's always an h in the denominator. So. I can fact you so we should always be able to factor an h out of the numerator. If you can't factor an h out of the numerator, something you miss something along the way. So that's a red flag. You want to go back and double check why is it that you're not able to factor an h out? These problems I give you will always you'll always be able to take an h out. So what happens here? H's go away. So the hole has been removed. Sorry, I, I left my limit statement out. Let me write it. H is H is gone, so now I'm going to reevaluate my limit. What do I do here? Yeah, plug in a zero for H, and what do I get? X plus zero, which is two X, right? So F prime of X is equal to two X. So what I want to convince you about this derivative function is that this is the slope formula tailored and built specifically for this graph? Okay. So let me write out this information again. So here's the function y equals x squared. I'm oh, sorry. Let me draw a little bit bigger because I want us to. Be convinced that this is actually something that that does work. Our derivative function is x squared. So before we um, test this out, let's just do some ballpark values and just kind of guess what we expect the slope to be, and then we can kind of have something concrete to compare against. Okay. Now, um, if you just have to do a random guess. Let's say at negative three, what do you expect from this slope here? Some negative, right? Let's say negative five or negative four. It doesn't matter, right? Just, we know it's some negative value. Okay. What do you expect out of the slope at this point here? Zero. Okay. All right. And let's do something that is uh, closer. Instead of negative three, let's say it's one here. What do you expect out of slope at one? Positive. But not as steep, right? So maybe slope two. OK. I just want to have something for us to compare against. OK, so let's say these are just our approximations just by doing something, you know, um, you know, there's no accuracy in anything that we're doing. We just want to kind of have some ballpark values. Now, what this derivative is going to do for us 
this is built specifically for this function. And if I if I plug in these X values into the derivative, it's not only going to give us an approximation, it's going to tell us what the exact steepness of this curve at this point. Let's test it out here. So F prime of negative three. So I'm going to insert negative three into my derivative function. What am I going to get? I'm sorry. F prime is not X squared, right? I copied it wrong. F prime of X is what? 2X, sorry, sorry. X squared is the function, 2X is my derivative. Okay, so 2X is my slope formula built specifically for this function, X squared. So if I insert at, uh, negative three in for X, what's my result gonna be? negative six, right? And that makes sense because our approximation was negative five or some, some negative value, okay? All right, let's test this point here, F prime of zero. If I wanna figure out the exact steepness of this point on this curve, I enter zero and for X, what do I get? Zero, okay, just like what we suspected. And then let's do F prime of one. What do I get from F prime of one? Two. One times two is two. And we knew that it was a positive slope. We knew that it was not quite as steep as the one that was on the other side. So we see that, um, you know, it's consistent with what we expect it to be, right? It's giving us the values that, um, that, that, that we're going to uh, expect. So when we go into the next section, we're going to have a much more efficient way of getting to the derivative function. Um, but uh, the good news is that, um, you know, we're only going to be working with fairly easy functions because this process is so messy. But once we get into the next section and we learn about power rule, we're going to leave this behind. We're going to be able to do this a lot more efficiently, but that also means that we're able to find the derivative for much more complicated uh, involved functions. So really, the entire rest of the semester, we're just going to be digging into um, applications and finding derivatives for different functions. So this whole semester is all about slope, is all about derivatives. Okay. But I keep wanting us to, I keep wanting us to, to understand that it is not a, an abstract concept, right? I, I really want us to just be able to visualize these things that, oh, it's just, it's just slope. It's just the steepness of a curve. It's just that we have the ability um, to do things that we weren't able to do before. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay, so back to, let me see, let me pull up the page that we were on. Now, what we're going to do with that information is we're going to be able to build tangent line equations. Okay, so a tangent line equation. Oh, uh, let me uh, let me first go uh, through these notes here. Um, we know that x squared is uh, the function graph. We know that two x is the derivative for uh, the function. And uh, but I want us to understand the distinction between these two functions. The original function is going to tell us the location of every point on this curve. The derivative is going to tell us the steepness of every point on this curve. We don't want to get these two confused because sometimes we insert one into one function and we expect something. And if we're not clear of what we're expecting, then we're going to be thrown off by the by the information that 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 the function returns. So understand that both the function and derivative talk about the same graph, but they're they're also giving us information that is different, related but different, right? One is a height finding formula. And then the other is a slope finding formula. All right, so if I plug one into the function, I'm going to get a location. But if I plug one into the derivative, I'm going to get the steepness. So that's something that we need to be clear about um, because um, even though this um, doesn't feel that complicated, you know, we're going to eventually bring in a second derivative. And if we're not clear here, then it all is just going to feel like a jumbled mess. Okay. Okay, um, so tangent line equation. Okay. This is what we're going to try to 
uh, achieve. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to. Um, the problem is going to give us a specific location on the graph. And our goal is to be able to create the equation of that tangent line. And to create that tangent line, I need two pieces of information. I need the points. And I need the slope. So let's try example two. It says find the equation of the line, uh, find the equation of the tangent line to y equals x squared at x equals negative five. So let's say this is all the way over at negative five. And we're trying to create the equation of that line. Okay, so here's our function. Our function is x squared. And our derivative is 2x. Okay. We're still dealing with the same function. Here. So we need to find order pair and we need to find slope. So I, um, I'm given a starting point. I'm given the x value. So how can I find the order pair? Plug neg negative 5 into the Wait, I want to find the point. OK, good. All right, so f of x is going to give us location. f prime is going to give us steepness. Okay, so we need to we need both pieces of information, but we need to understand what we're going to get back in return when we plug something into one function. So let's find the point first. So f of negative five is negative five squared, which is what? 25. So that's our point. Let's label the point here. Call it negative five, 25. All right, I need slope. So where am I going to find slope? Derivative. Okay, so I'm going to insert negative five into the derivative function. This is the, the slope formula built specifically for this function. And what's my slope? Negative 10. Okay, it's not drawn to scale, but you can imagine if this was a little further out to the left, it would be steeper uh, than that negative three. So now that we have our slope, we can put it into point slope form. We're just going to replace x sub 1 and y sub 1. That's going to be our point. And then we'll replace m with the slope. And we'll hold on to the x and y. That's part of our equation. Okay, so what's our tangent line equation? y minus 25 is equal to negative 10 parentheses. Okay, x minus negative 5, which is x plus 5. Now, this field incomplete, but this is point slope form. And if the problem asks you for a tangent line equation, you can stop here and be fine. Um, I know the tendency is you want to keep working at it, right? You want to distribute the negative 10 and add 25, which isn't wrong. But, you know, if if AP exam can, uh, if they will accept this form, then might as well just stop and move on to the next problem, right? Why continue working on the problem when it's already, when it's already going to earn you full credit? So I'm going to. We're going to try and uh, convince you and um, uh, try to um, gear you towards you know, leaving something in uh, point slope form. And that's um, that's um, uh, the preferred form because it's the easiest one to get to and um, it's it'll earn full credit. But if you want to keep going further and if you have it a different form, it's not wrong. It's just you're doing additional steps that you don't necessarily have to. Any questions? Okay, so this is really what we're going to focus on uh, today, tomorrow, and next Tuesday. Just finding the derivative using limit definition and, and then getting to the tangent line equation and understanding what the function and what the derivative, what that, you know, how they both talk about the same graph, but they give us different pieces of information that we need. Okay, uh, turn to the next page. Now let's try a different function which means that it'll have to be a different derivative, right? Every function is going to be a differently shaped. So because of different shapes, it's going to have its own derivative formula to tailor to every point on uh, every steepness that, uh, on that curve. Okay, so uh, part A, find the derivative. Um, I'm going to extend this a little further. Uh, I'm going to say we're also going to find the tangent line equation at two.
so here's our function. Let's um, here's our formula that we're working towards that we're using actually. So again, the easy substitution is going to be with the f of x, but we want to build the f of x plus h. So I want us to do this every time. Here's your function. Now let's rewrite the function with the x removed. And reserve a spot. Where that x was. Okay. Now what can I put in those spaces? If you do this, you're never going to make a mistake because there's only one place that you're going to put the S plus H and it's going to be inside those parentheses. Now, if there was more than one X in the function, then you would create a, a, a saved space for every X in the problem. Here, there's only one X, so there's only one reserved space. So we now have a substitution that we can make for f of x plus h. We have f of x, so um, let's get this numerator into a form where we can actually find the limit. I'm going to drop the parentheses now that I have that x plus h there. Everybody okay so far? So now this is just a limit problem that we can do because it's approaching a real number and the numerator is out of function notation. What's the first step? Mm -hmm. Plug in zero and what do we get? Zero over zero. Okay, we know there's a hole. We know there's a limit that awaits us. Um, what's, what type of problem does this look like? Yeah, yeah we got to multiply by what? Uh, conjugate, conjugate, yeah. Okay, so we'll foil the numerator, but leave the denominator alone. Root uh, square root times square root it just leaves us with the um, the term inside the square root. I'll foil every foil everything out, but I know that my middle term is. I'm expecting that to just go away. And then what's negative root x times root x? Just x, yeah. Don't foil the denominator. The H is ready for us to cancel out. All right, what cleanup uh, steps can we see in the numerator? Yeah. yeah, we can remove all the radical, right? Those are just uh, positive and negative of the same um, terms. We can cancel out the X's. Good, X's can go away. So um, the thing is, we really want to clean up the numerator as much as possible, right? Don't try to cancel anything out until the numerator is as bare as possible. Or you cancel the H's. Good. So this is what's going to happen every time, okay? You're just going to find a way to get an H to appear in the numerator so that we can remove it. Now there's a what left over up top? There's a one. Okay, so now final step. Plug in zero in for H. H. Yeah, in for H. So I have one over square root of X plus square root of X, which is in its denominator, right? One over two square root of X. That's my derivative. So F prime of X is one over two root X. So again, this derivative is specifically designed to tell us the steepness of any point on this curve. Yes, question. Where did the H go? Um, I know we canceled that one, the H's. Mm -hmm. um, 
and like the second to last step, but where did it go when we made it? Right. So once the H goes away, then we want to replace every remaining H with zero. Okay. Good. So and yeah, so we don't replace the X's, right? Because X is not the changing value, it's the H that's changing, and we want to hold on to the X. So here's our derivative and here's our function. Let's write it again. And this is what the function looks like. Radical function. So this function is going to tell us every single point, the location of every single point on this curve. But this derivative is going to tell us every steepness on this curve. Okay. And you can tell that every every steepness on this graph is going to be what? Different. Different, but um, in terms of positive and negative, it's always what? Positive. Always positive. And it makes sense, right? It doesn't matter what x value you plug in. You know, the domain is going to be greater than zero. So any value I plug in, I'm always going to get uh, a positive number. But I'm also getting a very gradual slope, right? These are not going to be very large numbers. These are going to be very, very uh, small numbers. OK, so uh, part B is saying uh, find the equation of tangent line at, at x equals 2. Well, B and C are combined. I'm just going to go directly to part C. So same thing every time. We want to find order pair. We want to find slope. And then we want to put in the point slope form. You guys want to try it first, and then we can talk about it. So the original function will get you your order pair. The derivative will get you your slope. And then build your point slope form. Everything you need is in, is in front of you. So what's our order pair? Two, what? Two. So what happens if I plug two into the function? Two root two. Two root two, right. So I have two comma root two. That's my order pair. And what's my slope? Um, One over. Two root two. Two root two. And it's OK. You don't have to rationalize the denominator. You don't have to rationalize the denominator in this course. So now once you have your order pair and your slope, then you're ready for what? Do the um, point slope, point slope yeah. form, right? Okay. Let's see, this is what you guys got. So two into the function will give me root two. Two into the derivative will give me my slope. I have my order pair, I have my slope. Point slope form, replace x1, y1, and m. You need your answer in this form. Basically, that's just going to tell us what the equation of this line is. Any questions? So uh, tomorrow we're going to, we, we still have one more thing that we need to go over, uh, which is, um, uh, the alternate definition of a derivative, which kind of does the same thing, looks similar, but uh, we'll practice that as well. And then uh, in your packet, uh, you're going to see a couple of uh, worksheet pages where we're going to work through that. And then uh, Tuesday, you're going to do the same thing just for extra practice. That'll be your virtual day homework. Okay, so let me get this on. We'll pick up tomorrow. Homework is not due tomorrow. I'm going to check your homework assignment next Wednesday.